So let's do an independent samples t-test using SPSS. If you haven't already, open SPSS and then open puppytraining.sav. Here is the setup for the study we are going to be doing. Mickey is a dog trainer studying reinforcement effectiveness. He randomly assigns 16 puppies to two different reinforcement training techniques, clicker training versus food training. Now after the training of the puppies, he measures the number of correct responses by each puppy in 10 exercises, meaning that each puppy can have a score from 0 to 10. Was there a difference between the two training techniques? Well, let's find out. First of all, what is the statistic that we are going to use for this test? And it is the independent samples t-test. We are comparing two independent samples to see if the mean of one sample is different than the mean of the next. The Nolan alternative hypothesis. What we will assume is that the mean of the population from which the first sample was polled is the same as the mean of the population from which the second sample was polled, that there is no difference between them. So, mu1 equals mu2. Population 1 equals population 2, or more specifically, the means of those two populations are equal. What will then the alternative hypothesis be? mu1 does not equal mu2. So now we need a level of significance. Because we want to know whether the two means are different, we are not using a directional test. We will therefore use a non-directional or two-tailed test. We'll set our alpha level at 0.05 and our degrees of freedom will be 14. Let's talk about those degrees of freedom for a moment. Remember, we have two groups, two samples. The degrees of freedom for a sample is n minus 1, or sample size minus 1. There are eight puppies in each of these two groups. So in group 1, the degrees of freedom is 8 minus 1, or 7. For group 2, the degrees of freedom is 8 minus 1, or 7. Add them together for the two groups, their degrees of freedom is 14. Or we could calculate the total sample size, 8 plus 8 is 16, minus 2. So the degrees of freedom are either n1 minus 1 plus n2 minus 1, or n1 plus n2 minus 2. If we go to our t table at the back of our notes and we look up degrees of freedom equal 14, two-tailed test, alpha equals 0.05, the critical value from our t table is positive negative 2.145. Now we are ready to run the numbers. So we'll turn to SPSS to calculate the statistics. So what I want you to notice in SPSS is that this data set is set up a little differently. You would probably not find a data set like this in the real world. I've set it up this way for a reason, and that reason will become apparent as we use this data set for our analysis. To see these differences, let's begin in variable view. Notice that the first two variables are correct and group, with correct being a scale variable and group being a nominal variable. If we now click over to data view, we can also see that group has values associated with it. So let's click on values and see what they are. 1 equals clicker training, 2 equals food reward training. Ah, now we know what 1 and 2 stand for in this variable. So click OK to take us back to the variable view. And now let's look at the data view. In our data view, we can see that we have 16 values. There are scale scores for correct. That's the number of tests that the puppy got correct and what group the puppy belongs to, group 1 or group 2. Those are the only two variables that we're going to need for this independent samples t-test. In order to conduct this analysis, you should go to the Analyze menu, which you find among the drop-down menus at the very top of SPSS. So, Analyze. Then choose Compare Means and Independent Samples t-test. When you do, you'll get a dialog box that looks about like this. 
Under test variables, we want to move our dependent variable into that box, and our grouping variable will, of course, be group. So move correct into test variables box, and group into grouping variables. But we're not ready to run the analysis quite yet. The OK is still grayed out. We have not yet defined the groups. Now, by the way, if you're seeing variable labels instead of the words like clicker, food, and correct, just right click on any of those variable names and choose show variable names. If you're on a Mac, control click and choose show variable names. Let's define these two groups. Click on define groups and you will see a space for group one and group two. Just make those one and two. Now quickly, you might say, why do we have to define the groups? There's just two groups. And the fact is that we may be doing something that has more than two groups. So let's say we have scores for freshmen, sophomore, juniors, and seniors, and those are labeled as group one, two, three, and four. And we want to compare freshmen to seniors. What we might do in our defined groups is make group one, one, or freshmen, and group two, four, and seniors. So it may be that we will be defining our groups using more than two groups. This is a simplified example. We only have the two. Click on Continue, and then click on OK. As the output pops up, you'll notice at the top we see group statistics, which, get, which gives us our sample size of 8 for each group, the mean for each group, 6.38 and 5.13, and the standard deviations of 1.4 and 1.7. Are those standard deviations approximately equal? Let's turn to the Levine's test to find out. I've covered up part of the output, so we'll focus solely on Levine's test for equality of variances. It's actually an F test. We'll learn more about F tests later. But what we're interested in is that significance value of 0 0.490. Question, is 0 0.490 less than 0 0.05? It is not. It is greater. So is Levine test significant or not? That is a non-significant test. It is not significant. There is no significant difference between the variances in the groups, and that's good news for us. So we can assume that the variances are equal, or approximately equal. In other words, 1.4 is approximately equal to 1.7. It's close enough for the assumptions of this test. Great. Now let's look at the rest of this independent samples t-test box. There are three boxes that we are interested in. And they're on the top row, the row that says equal variances assumed. I've put a line through equal variances not assumed so that we won't be distracted by those numbers. That, however, that second line, equal variance is not assumed, is the line from which we would have to interpret our t-test if Levine's test had been significant. So let's go back. We're interpreting off the top row. We have a t-value, a degrees of freedom, and a significance value of 0.135. Here's how we would write up those results. t with 14 degrees of freedom, so the 14 is in parentheses, equals 1.59. I've rounded up 1.587 to 1.59. P equals 0.135. That number comes from the SIG two-tailed box. NS, not significant. If you look closely, you'll notice that the T, the P, and the NS are all in italics. So let's go back to our five steps. We have calculated the statistic. The T value, in this case, is a 1.59. So I would write t equals 1.59. And now it's time to make the decision. I do my full write-up, but I would conclude with something like this, that clicker training is not more effective than traditional food reward training. t with 14 degrees of freedom equals 1.59. p equals 1.35, comma, ns, comma, two-tailed test. Whether or not you include the two-tailed is kind of optional. But that's how we would write up the results for the independent samples t-test.